Hey YouTube, today I want to do a quick update on the tanks and provide you with a little bit of information on a couple of experiments I've been running my do-it-yourself CO2 systems. Since the majority of you are here probably for the do-it-yourself CO2 system information, I'm going to start off with that and then jump into the tank update at the end. Um, as you can probably see here on my 10 gallon um, do-it-yourself CO2 system, I've added some activated carbon to the bubble counter. Um, I did that to resolve one of the issues I found that I have had with my do-it-yourself CO2 systems and I've heard others have had as well. Uh, pretty consistently and that is the release and build up of almost like a fungus like material on the diffuser that's then released into the water um, and spread around the tank which helps to cloud your tank and to contribute to algae growth um, and I've wanted to eliminate that for quite a while especially on my 29 I have a 4 liter rig on my 29 um, it's two 2 liter bottles I have sitting behind the um, actually behind my speakers over there um, that operates the do-it-yourself CO2 system for the um, tank and what has happened is the um, the CO2 system runs so fast that the bulb counter can't quite keep up in terms of filtering so as the um, gunk comes from the, I guess the almost dirty CO2 comes from the system itself it goes in the bubble counter and it filters but then after the water builds up too much of the alcohol, the sugar, the yeast, and whatnot, it's it's not even filtering anymore necessarily. It's just pushing that into your your diffuser, which is causing that white gunk. So what I've done is I put the activated carbon in there as a way of picking up those stray chemicals because that's what it's designed to do. Um, so I've been using it on this tank for about five weeks now. And I haven't had a significant problem with it in the past in terms of this, um, but that being said, I've had absolutely no buildup on the diffuser and I have absolutely no release thus far. I've been running it about three weeks on my 29 gallon, um, and I haven't had any issues thus far. Um, so I'm optimistic. I think this actually might be a solution, but I want to run it for a couple more weeks before I tell you all for sure that this is a way to solve that issue um, and make your CO2 system uh, better in terms of cleanliness for your tank. Um, so I'll let you guys all know here before too long. I've also been experimenting with a bunch of different... Um, mixtures for the do-it-yourself CO2 system. I'll give an update here in a couple weeks on what I've been doing um, and let you know how they've been working. Um, I'm trying some syrup and stuff like that and it's it's interesting to say the least. So anyhow here's my 10 gallon. I've changed quite a bit um, since the last time you've seen this video. Um, I have moved some of the hydrophilia over to the right side of the tank and I have had significant growth on the Anubius. Um, it's now huge in fact I think I need to cut it back and replant part of it in the other tank. Um, I've also taken the java moss that kind of volunteered to grow in the tank and I'm going to try to get a carpet in here because I've had no luck with anything else because the Malaysian trumpet snails dig up everything else. Um, I've had dwarf hair grass was doing decent in here and then it got dug up. I had tons of baby tears for those of you who have seen my past videos. It was all the way around this plant and it dug every last bit up except for that piece there. So. I've since given up on all those plants, so I don't know. I'd like to get rid of the trumpet snails, but the only way to do that is using copper, and I have shrimp in this tank, so I have no desire to kill all the shrimp, and they are doing amazing. I have so many shrimp in here. I must have easily close to 150. It's kind of ridiculous. And since he's here volunteering to be seen, there is my hillstream loach, and he is awesome. He, When he lays in rocks, he thinks he's camoing by turning white. He's usually brown. He's kind of stupid, but really funny. And I like how he looks, so. Anyhow, um, yeah, that's my computer. <laughs> and then my 29 has been doing quite well. I have had um, some ridiculous growth on the Sagittaria, Sagittaria sabulata across the bottom. Um, for those of you who haven't seen my past videos, all of this is from this tall plant in the back. All of that is from that one plant, and it's done that in probably about probably about three months. Um, so I'm really happy with it. I need to actually take this section over here, and I want to replant it at the back and see if I can't kind of turn this section into Sagittarius sabulata. I'm going to make it jungly is my goal, but we'll see. I haven't had amazing luck with a few other plants in here. Um, that's due to a, a number of issues. I still have diatoms in this tank. I'm a small issue with it, and it's kind of absurd that after having this tank for 
close to a year now that I stopped diatoms, and I know why. It's because I use pool filter sand. Um, I have a couple inches of it in here, and the amount of silicates from it is too much. Basically, I put way too thick of substrate, and that's my problem, and eventually it'll go away, but there's nothing I can do about it until it's gone. So, um, Fish are doing great. The rainbow fish are really happy to see me, always. And if I could get you guys a good view of the rams, I would. They're hiding from me. They're very, very shy fish for those of you who don't have rams. Um, that being said, they're very, very entertaining to watch. And somewhere in here I have, there we go, I have a couple, um, oh, Sturbay Cory cats. And they've gotten quite a bit bigger. They're the coolest fish in the tank, in my opinion. Um, the 29, which I never show, I still haven't done anything with it. Um, I've been meaning to put shellies in here for ages, if you can't tell by the shells. Um, but still haven't done it. So hoping to do that here in the next couple months. I actually just extended the lease of my apartment for um, like another year or so. I'm feeling like it's worthwhile to do it. So I'll give you guys all an update um, once there's another change in the tanks. And give you an update as well on how the do-yourself CO2 sim experience, experiments are going. See if I can't uh, resolve a couple of my issues and help some people in the process. So... And last but not least, thank you to all my subscribers out there. And if you made it this far, you're awesome. Um, thank you for watching. All right.